My name is Catherine Kim, and I'm from South Korea. And I've been living my half of my life in Hanoi. And this is my third year in Eunice. Um, I like to make films and dance and mix and match the clothes, you know. And my joy of daily life is like um, in the morning, I um, stand up in front of my closet and then um, think about hmm, what should I wear? And then that's kind of my joy every day. Okay, and I used to be in a fashion sustainable service group for two years. Yes. And I am interested in the environmental impact and the human rights of clothing workers in like Bangladesh or Vietnam. Okay. Um, in the future, I want to study human environment design, which broadly explores sustainable fashion design and interior design and um, film. Okay. Yeah, um, well, my name is Kang. Um, I'm a 10th grade scholarship student at UNIS Hanoi. Um, we're based in Vietnam. Um, like I said, I'm an artist. Um, I also do graphic design and um, I've competed in a few fashion um, competitions in the past. Um, didn't win any, but um, that's my background so far. Yeah, um, so today with us, we have our very special guest, uh, Mr. Roland Murray. And uh, Roland is a very talented and well-known fashion designer. Um, with works that um, have been inspiring and um, admired around the world. Um, and today, me and Catherine um, got a chance to sit down and talk to him, not about um, just about his fashion works, but also his interest towards um, fashion sustainability. So, Catherine, let's go. Um, we've read a lot of your background, and you are proud of your family and your background. How did that inspire you to find your path, and how did um, self-taught happen? Was that hard or did it give you a sense of liberty? I think uh, in a world where we want to express ourselves, the moment we want to be creative, our creativity has to come from our legacy. Uh, so at school will will uh, a bit disturb. That's why I never went to school to learn. And uh, uh, it was great for me because I think I've kind of person with a strong mind. I took the time to learn from my own legacy and, and create my own technique and allowed me to uh, not having a blueprint of a career. That's been everything I've done. It was based on my own identity. And I advise every young person who want to be creative is to do that way. Yeah, th thank you. Um, personally, as a self-taught artist, I feel really inspired by the message. Um, yeah, I just think self-taught kind of brings something out of you, um, like your personality and all that skills as well. Um, like I mentioned before, uh, Roland Murray, he's um, not just um, a fashion designer, but you're also uh, one that is interested and in promotes sustainability. Um, so we were wondering, after being in the fashion industry for so long, um, what and when was like the turning point that made you realize that as a fashion designer, you needed to take action um, towards fashion sustainability? I think I think you're going to understand me, guys. It's when you're a young person and you fight to establish yourself as a creative person. That's when you want to find that voice. And that voice is so important for you to breathe and to exist. The moment you find it, it's so powerful that the day you wake up after 20 years of career and realize that the chance of that voice is destroying the planet is a big questioning. That's when you have to reevaluate your existence as a creative person and, and apologize for the mistake you didn't know. But the moment you start to know them, you have to make a difference. And that's why everything changed for me. I were, my CEO introduced me to a, a, a documentary called a 10 billion and I invest a lot of my private money in it for, for the, the documentary to be finished. And from that moment, I couldn't really close my eyes on, on the problem of fashion and, and, and uh, uh, the reality of the planet. Did like the filming made you think um, we got to take action for the planet? Was well, there yeah. like something, some kind of situation? that you felt have, this is serious. Have you watched 10 billion yet? No, no. actually not. But we saw watch, the trailer though. No but, no, but watch 10 billion and you will have, when I watched it, it's 
10 years ago when I, when I was allowed, when I was invited to see it. And I heard about climate, climate immigration there and, and it was not happening, but I promise you in the year after we start to see climate immigration coming in Europe and, and in masses. And that was due to, a, to a, yes, we thought it was due from social politics situation in the country, but the, the reality of, of the, the Arab Spring in, a, 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 in, in North Africa was the fact that uh, of clim- the real base of it was climate crisis. It was the, the, the price of the weight going up and, and people starting to struggle in that country. Fashion could be playing a big role in climate change. And I feel like now we got everyone has to um, pursue sustainable fashion. And however, we want to ask you a question that um, it's clear that the price point for the sustainable fashion is um, significantly higher than the fast fashion. And, um, you know, teenagers and. Okay. A, no, teenagers, I don't yeah. I you, you give me you give me a, a big picture here that which is we're talking what mass market we're talking uh, luxury. Uh, well, let's talk about identity. People, we are people. We make our decision. Yeah. I live my youth wearing secondhand clothes. That's the beginning. That's the beginning of sustainability. But it's mm. not you going to live without. So you create your own identity. We dress up to finish ourselves. We, like you said, you wake up in the morning, you dress up. We dress up to finish our identity. None of us want to run naked in the street. That's not us. Thing. We have to get dressed. That's been clothes are part of who we are. That's been does. If you establish that, we have all the solution we want. Okay, we don't have to buy automatically mm. new clothes and we don't have to buy automatically sustainable clothes. You have just to dress. That's been find what you like mm. and take your decision if it's sustainable or not. Second and sustainable. Uh, second, second thing about, uh, 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 about uh, the situation sustainable clothes are not more expensive than no, unsustainable clothes. Just find what you think you can afford and what fit you values that's been at that point it's at the same level and on the on the other hand to uh um, on on the on the way we dress on on the way we 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 we're going to to move on uh in in so in society uh we have to co- we have to consider that clothes are just uh we have to control our our amount of clothes we need in our life. But the only way yeah. going to come out of the situation of planet crisis is by consuming. But we have to start to consume the right product. The answer of our future is, consu- is still consumerism. It's not to stop and to die. We have to consume, but we have to consume the right thing that becomes circular. At the moment, we consume things that come on one side and, and go as a garbage. If we start to consume something that it is, can become something else, we are in the best direction. That's been one thing is sure. Consumerism is the only answer for short, to long term, to 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 the to the situation, we can't imagine living without it. Mm. But the system is flawed. I see. The system is is the problem, and um, mm, sustainable no, no. way to um, wear clothes is by secondhand clothing or even by the clothes that you oh, think and is but, sustainable and right for the we, budget. I agree. So sorry to cut you. Off. We have to stop to think that there is a, there is an establishment. Sustainable is more expensive. Uh, everything has a reason of of existing. You go to really a high street brand that are not sustainable. It's still a kind of luxury for a big amount of people. They still find pleasure to buy buy clothes. Now, how do you change that? Is is to is to change the people. It's not to change the product. Change the people. We say, why don't you dress up mm. based about who you are inside? What well, is about you that is so unique? But these people don't see the, how unique they are. They just want to have a, a luxury attitude on, mm-hmm. of consumer. 
maybe guys you should go to stand up in in front of all the big stores with with a, a second hand clothes and say let's try to make a makeover here and will you buy second hand compared to compared to uh, uh, to buy things that are not just... it's it's uh, there are so many solutions so many solutions we can approach mm. i find in my way but you guys you, you young people you have the world in your hand or the kind of world we're going to leave you as a fashion service member we've came across companies that eliminate microplastics including oh. arch and hooks which yes. we know that you are collaborating it with so yes. could you tell us a little bit more about your work with arch and hooks and is there a, a specific reason that you decided to collaborate with them as your step to promote sustainability yeah there are things I'm really proud in life. There are things I'm really will make the success of my life the day I will pass away. And uh, one of it, one of them is uh, when one day I wake up and I realize that in my industry there is a, a product, the equivalent of the plastic straw in restaurant is a hanger that goes from the factory to the shop. Mm -hmm. That hanger here. Yeah. You just carry the clothes for one trip from the factory to the shop. And after the shop, they put them in their own angles and we throw that away. And I was so deep distressed by that situation. Uh, I really wanted to make a difference. And I met a uh, uh, short, who was the, the CEO of uh, uh, Arch and Works at the time. It was a startup company. And I, I told him my, my, my dilemma and a, we decided to create a, a new product and we came out with a, with a, a hanger was at the time was called the blue soldier, which is a, a hanger completely recyclable and sustainable that can do that trip and, and could change, could change the industry. Uh, from that story, the, 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 the product grew. Now it is a full collection of hangers made of what we call blue wave plastic. And uh, it's what we're working on, in other words, to, to, grow the, to grow more and more product made of blue wave plastic that it will transform our life and, uh, and we will make a change because I think there is enough plastic on the planet. I think plastic should be the third raw material we have on the planet. We have enough plastic to really produce the, what we need around us in a circular way. And we don't have to produce any more virgin plastic. Doesn't take away the pro of micro, micro plastic in our bodies, but hey, I can't fight for everything. Uh, just a question: um, yep. Can we, like domestic people, buy blue hangers? Can we buy them? Is it possible, uh, or is it only for like? Not. It's something we question questioning the what we call we're doing b2b which is we sell to to, to big company b2c is direct to the consumer and we're not there yet but uh, uh but it's something we're working on it, it it's a really mm. more complex problem i didn't realize how much the world was complex since i i started to be working in sustainability fashion was already complex but the world is more complex than fashion <laughs> yeah um, so with Arch and Hooks, you, just like you said, um, you haven't had any product that actually um, can be used in like domestic and daily life. Um, so I was wondering, um, uh, with your collaboration with Arch and Hooks, um, do you and the company have any uh, plans in the future to uh, make products that appeal into daily life so that students that, like us can also buy and um, participate in fashion sustainability? The, the the main concern we want is even to grow even bigger than that. We want to replace every packaging that has to be in plastic because we can't take away the quality of plastic. We know the problem of plastic, but there are qualities of plastic the way we're living because the, we're not going to be able to replace automatically plastic by something that is 100% sustainable. We, we, everything we will replace it with will have a... a, a a reality on endangering the planet because all we will have to grow more kind of product to make more pineapple to make plastic it is still it's still a massive problem that's mean we have to deal with the, what we have there and and to make it going in the chain of consumerism 
The massive problem we have here is none of us can see the difference between a really sustainable recyclable plastic product and virgin plastic product. We can see it. And that's where I think was the biggest, the biggest uh, 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 questioning and the biggest deception of, of, of my life is like, are we going to make it visible? That's been our, what we're working on at the moment is, is a branding a branding that should be a, lab, a labeling on the on the on the uh, packaging, a kind of packaging that allowed every person to understand in the most simple way that the product is right or not, and that's where Blue Wave as a branding is is existing, and that's why we're working at the moment as a bigger scale is how that branding will start to exist in our. Uh, 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 everyday life and we know that oh, I'm buying that bottle because I know it's recyclable and because it, and not that bottle because it's still virgin plastic that they've been doing from petro petroleum product. I see your vision. Honestly, like as somebody who like um, recycles and cares a lot about like planet's um, health, it's, it's surprising because most um, teenagers and I think families care more about um, cost efficiency compared to um, because personally in Vietnam, as far as I know, most people don't really recycle. Like they would throw all the trash into one bin and then it would like create these um, landfills that are not very sorted and then most stuff don't get recycled. You know, so it's a very complicated issue that not a lot of people uh, it's, like, know, address. There is yes. a there is a massive problem on, 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 the, on the ideology of youth is you think all the time you can clear the problem tomorrow. You know, one person, oh, we'll do it tomorrow. Oh, no, tomorrow. And there is a day tomorrow is, is, is you pass tomorrow. Uh, uh, but I still think that however we're going to go through it on, on, on this planet, we have a chance to be responsible and to take our decision. We still have a, a reason to, to not succeed. You know, we still have some moment where we have to, to recognize that we are not uh, doing it the right way. We have we have the right to apologize for what we're doing and, and try to make a difference. That's been all, all the people, all the young people, you know, we're not recycling. It is, it, do we have to to, to to let them do it or do we have to fight them? That's a decision you, we have to take as, as, as a personal identity. I know that sometimes I would Pick up a fight in a in a bar if I see a barman using a, a plastic straw and and I will go for it and uh, and as a client because I'm the client I'm supposed to be right he will have to apologize I will humiliate him does it make a difference I don't know because if I write to the hotel I say I will not come back to your place if you carry on to do it you know it, it, the the way you want to to really to to, to face it is. It, is a kind of a personal journey and uh, where how long is a piece of string you know you, you, there is a moment you say what am i doing here and if you can control your world from one hand to another hand already you're doing something amazing you know you you are in control of that space and and i think that's what i learned in the in in in, in the 80s during, during the the aids pandemic is you learn you you that's what you can transform. It's what you can touch from one hand to another hand, and your freedom start at the beginning uh, of your finger and finish at the beginning of your other finger. That's your space of freedom. That's where people have no right to touch you. Yeah, I think you mentioned um, a lot about like with the, our small actions. Sometimes we feel kind of like not very empowered because um, with like our small actions, we're wondering if we actually make an impact while other people are still doing um, things such as not recycling or um, putting trash in the wrong place. Um, and I think this is very clear with the rise of social media. Um, I'm not sure if uh, you uh, had uh, noticed, but as like teenagers who consume like social media as like almost every day, I noticed that um, like with the rise of like platforms as such, uh, younger generations have been clearly more aware of uh, problems such as pollution and plastic waste. Um, but at the same time, um, we're just students. And so we feel like um, it's, even though it's like very easy just to buy something as eco-friendly as such, um, it's clear that a lot of people aren't aware of the problem of 
um, plastic and pollution. And so um, these actions that we do, such as picking up trash, sometimes it feels like we're doing nothing and like we're not leaving an impact because the world is like so big, right? And um, we're just doing like a small part. How? And um, so to wrap it up, uh, my question is, in your personal opinion and like through your own experience, what do you think like young consumers as, like us can do or demand within um, fashion and retail or just in general in order to um, help help our planet out? Uh, do you want the real answer? Okay. The only thing your parents can promise you when you are born is one day you're going to die. That's the only promise your parents can tell you. You will die. That's when, think on that day, however old you will be, what regrets do you want to have on that day? That's all. And work every day of your life to not have regrets. How small, what you're going to do, you don't want to have regrets. Don't expect people are going to do things for you. Just do them for yourself. That's my answer. Thank you. Honestly, that's so inspiring. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. And um, since this is the Festival of Hope, uh, to return back to the theme of hope, um, what do you ultimately hope or want to achieve in the fashion industry? Um, and like, how will you know that you've like finally won the battle of um, pollution, microplastics, all of these? Um, uh, yeah, and create products that finally yeah, help our planet. Yeah, so nice because because it's yes. Uh, I don't think I don't think the battle is uh, uh, you win the battle, but you don't win the war. I I, I think we as what's the problem here? Is it us or is it the planet? We want to talk about the planet, but we don't want to talk about our human race to, to, to survive. The planet is going to survive after us. It's us. The problem is us. Are we human beings? Are we, do we have humanity or are we just a virus of this planet? How do we want to see it? We virus that need clothes to dress. You know, we, the questioning is so massive, you know, it's, but the real problem is what do we want to stand for? I know, but I'm going to, in a part of my life where I still have years to go through where I didn't know. You know way earlier than me. You are in an age that you, are, you have to face it. But you know what? Sometimes it's so good to know that, that your life is going made of decision that if you don't go in the right direction, it's going to make you sad. And if you go in the right direction, you will smile at it. Even if, if he, you're not succeeding completely, you know you're trying your best. And I think never expect other people to do something for you, but expect to do your best all the time. Buy the clothes, buy, buy the, the, the product that makes you feel right. That's all. Be aware that what you talk about social media is or uh, it's horizontal, it's not vertical anymore. I come from a generation where culture was vertical. It was starting from the top and it was coming to us. Fashion was starting from really a top of designer and we had to wait six months to understand it. Now in a vertical culture, you have message that go in every direction. At the same time that, that we're producing or, uh, 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 horizontal, you have created a vertical culture. That message can be fake news, lies, truth we don't know what they are but at the time at my time before social media everything was vertical and we and it was a bit like coming from the top you know there is something that we believe even if it was a lie but the belief was stronger i don't know which one is the best i know i know which one have created have created me i know which one has opened me eyes there is a good and bad on the two of them I think you have you have to really every morning when you look at yourself in the mirror to dress yourself, first look at yourself in the eyes and say, do I lie to myself? Or do I like myself? Do I like what, what I'm going to do today? 
And after you choose your clothes and you write, you should enjoy every morning what you're going to wear because you make a difference.